Yeah, there was quite a bit of meta hate, but we got through it. Uh, <laughs> the moderators did a good job keeping things in line. Yeah, there was a fair amount of hate, but there was also a lot of support for this kind of thing, so that's good that the, that the community is okay with this kind of uh, event happening. So let's get to it. First question is from Scurry. Yes, how well do you feel Gauss Rifles fit in comp play? The Gauss Rifle right now is simply the best ballistic weapon for long-range standoffs. So on maps like Alpine Peaks, Tourmaline Desert, uh, where you're going to have the possibility of very long-range standoffs, the Gauss Rifle is the best weapon. doesn't get any better. Uh, it still has its three range brackets. It wasn't nerfed like the auto cannons recently were. It does 15 damage and moves at 2,000 meters per second. That, what's not to like? One heat. has the charge mechanic, but once you get past that, it's pretty simple. So, Gauss Rifles fit in comp play in long range builds, but they also do very well at point blank even. They, because they move so fast, you don't have to lead a light mech or anything very cl uh, far when they're running around your feet. So, Gauss Rifle, good good weapon. Next question from El Bandito. Yes, are LRMs OP? First of all, no. LRMs are not OP. They are strong, and they got significantly stronger since they increased their projectile speed. Uh, as you guys know, there was then debuffed. It was debuffed. The speed was brought down a little bit because it was a little extreme for about a week there. Uh, but with uh, using advanced target decay, that gives you the little bit of extra time you need on targets as they move out of your line of sight for you to get really good hits on people. So LRMs are very strong. However, like I say here, proper use of cover can completely negate LRMs. So if you're moving correctly, if you're behind cover, you're not going to get hit by LRMs. There can sometimes be uh, like really solid coverage, even in open pug games. If multiple LRM boats are out there and they have relatively good spawning, there can just be a wall of LRMs that feels insurmountable. But we'll get to that in another question. Uh, so LRMs are most effective against unorganized teams. Organized teams know how to move, know where to move. So in, in competition, that's why LRMs don't work very well. It's because you know how to move from cover to cover. You can focus fire anything that's available. You'll have options available available to you, like ECM, that you'll have planned for beforehand. Next question is from Wolfways. How do you think LRMs could be changed to be useful in higher ELO ranges? Uh, so LRMs are useful in higher ELO ranges. Uh, good good players uh, regardless they find good uses for LRMs. LRMs are a very strong weapon if used uh, properly and if your enemy is unorganized like I said in the previous slide. So if you can catch some people out you can learn them into oblivion so they already are useful in high ELO ranges. Where they're not useful is in competition where all 12 people in the team are on the same TeamSpeak server, have good coordination, etc. But in the opens, even at high ELO ranges, LRMs are still effective. Okay, Monkey, Mr. Drunken Master, and Gyrock all asked, how in your opinion can the game be incentivized for people to play non-meta humping builds? How would you redesign the weapon balance to enable the re-emergence of balance between the different mech roles and classes, and what can be done to get back to brawling? Well. We're about to have a pretty good look at what could be the future of brawling here in the clan uh, public test tomorrow, and then next week on Tuesday when the clan mechs come out. Uh, the clan mechs have all kinds of options available to them that the inner sphere mechs simply don't. <laughs> they have durable XL engines where you can lose a side torso without dying. They have ultra auto cannons. They have all kinds of weight savings technology. Their lasers do more damage, etc. SRM fix is also incoming. Uh, so if SRM start working, we could see kind of a shift back to uh, a brawling kind of meta if it's if it hurts enough. But we'll see that. That's next week also. Uh, one of the major things that we could use to see is probably a cooldown increase on PPCs altogether across the board. PPCs, ER PPCs, clan ER PPCs. I would suggest upping it to at least five or six seconds so that the rate of fire on PPCs and therefore the DPS goes down considerably. So a PPC will still be a good standoff weapon, but in uh, engagement where the enemy is pushing you, 
you may not be able to get out enough damage that you want. So PPCs will become more have a less of a overwhelming where they they work in every situation. Right now, you can brawl with PPCs as long as nothing gets sub 90. You can you can literally engage at almost any range in any situation with PPCs. So PPCs simply are too powerful. By increasing their cooldown, it allows other weapon systems to get in the DPS they want, and also for Brawl mechs to close the distance and get into the range where PPCs aren't as effective. So, for overall balance, that would be a good step. Uh, also, Jump Jet Heat has been uh, is going to be introduced. That will help also reduce the rate of fire on PPCs. Because you'll be generating more heat than you usually do, so you won't be able to shoot as, con uh, as constantly. IP Magic asks, if all things remain status quo with the game balance, what can be done by teams to beat the current meta without using said meta? What are the keys to the castle? Give us the kryptonite to the meta. I know this will not be one thing, it will be a series of things. Now, the problem is, even if a team cloned itself and it was exactly a mirror match on both sides, pilot skill, the jump sniping deck will win against the brawling deck right now. Mostly because of what I just said, how versatile the PPC is. So it's, it's the PPC is simply too powerful to allow brawling to be stronger in almost any situation. Now only a few situations can arise, and we did see this in the recent tournament on Caustic Valley. Caustic Valley is a great map for brawlers because there's very little distance to cover, and the distance you do have to cover you often have, well, cover to hide behind <laughs> as you move into position. Uh, so, again, uh, Steel Jaguar and House of Lords matches, our, both of our opponents used Brawl decks, jumped right on top of us. It was rough, we were able to spread out though, and get in our, our damage that we needed. So, Brawling can work, but it's really, really map dependent. So, you just basically at this point, if you while maps are still random, you can't afford to take a brawling deck in case something like Alpine Peaks pops up. So if you commit to brawling, Alpine Peaks is your map. You're pretty much screwed if there's a team with sniping weapons. You're there's no possible way you can maneuver onto them without taking massive amounts of damage. So as long as map is still random, brawling is going to have issues. So basically, there is no key to the castle. I'm sorry, brawling can't inconsistently beat a sniping deck. Assuming, uh, Zof says, assuming for a moment that jump jet heat and fall damage tweaks are going to make jump sniping less favorable, will hump hill humping with high mounted weapon hardpoint stake center stage. So basically, yes, if jump jet and fall damage tweaks are so strong that even just jumping shallow, moving uh, quickly, just. <laughs> dodging shots even, we'll see, uh, becomes unsustainable because you take too much damage. Yeah, un and I don't want to see that because I've said this many times before, to me, uh, stalker hill humping is about as boring as the game can get. That's just super stagnant gameplay. Just camping is the whole strategy, counter sniping, and it's, yeah, just overall boring to me. So if that does happen, where jump sniping I, and I'm not. I'm guessing that this is not going to happen, but yes, stalkers will take over. Hill humping with high mounted energy hard points will take over the meta, and stalkers will be meta again, just like they were before Ghost Eat. Oh, and then the, the misery was good too with this AC20 for a while until the projectile speed took a nerf. McGraw18 says So if all of the clan measures to reduce. Pinpoint front loaded damage is applied to the inner sphere. Do you expect the meta to change? Uh, right now, no. I suggested this on an NGNG podcast quite a while ago, and I'm glad to see that it's been adopted for the clan max. It's far better than pinpoint 15 damage alpha strikes. But uh, I suggested at the time 7 damage for PPCs to the location hit, and then 1.5 arcs to the two adjacent locations. So, uh, in the current meta, if nothing if nothing changes, I would expect for, like, well, nothing to change. Maybe some dual gauss rifle builds, like dual gauss Jaeger Max, dual gauss cataphracts may become more uh, popular, but the PPC won't take enough of a nerf that it will stop being taken. And there's no better alternative right now. Uh, the auto cannons weigh too much for what you're going to get out of them to be boating them, so 
it's not going to really help. Quizzical Coconut says, Can our current close-range weapons beat our long-range weapons up close at a competitive level? And I kind of just talked about this a little bit ago. No, unfortunately. Uh, close-range weapons <laughs> fail against long-range weapons in most situations because the long-range weapons are effective at all ranges, including close-range. Now, like I said, also on maps like Caustic Valley, Frozen City, Brawl decks can get an advantage over... Uh, long range decks by moving into their minimum range, putting out the lots of loads of DPS that Brawl mechs do, but uh, right now sniping is still too strong at close range. Butane 9000 says, out of all the non competitive battle mechs the Inner Sphere has, which do you think is the best? Uh, well, at this point, it's, you can pretty much call the Stalker not good for competition, besides maybe restricted decks. So I think the Stalker is back out of the anywhere near tier 1s and is into like the tier 2 mechs. So Stalker. Still the best mech outside of the, <laughs> outside of the meta mechs. Uh, Ghost Heat, when Ghost Heat was implemented, the popular builds used to be things like 4 uh, PPCs for ER large lasers or more ER large lasers uh, but since Ghost Heat went in Stalkers took a massive hit. Then for a while there was a rise of the AC-20 2 PPC Misery and that took a significant hit when the projectile speed of the AC-20 dropped down so much. I still don't approve of that massive drop. Uh, and now its triple range bracket's been taken away so the build is also not looking too good right now. But it has great weapon mounts, super high mounted energy hard points, lots lots of hard points in general, and its hitboxes are amazing for use with the standard engine. Jump, not having jump jets hurts it, but... Stalker, still good, just not great at this point. Mitterol, uh, Meteor All says, after seeing many self-proclaimed competitive players aggressively badmouthing XL engine builds in many mech threads here, that's on the MechWar Online forums, I was rather surprised to see the large amount of XL engines in the tournaments. So how is the current standpoint, or what, I guess he meant to say, what is the current standpoint on XL engines in the competitive scene? Now, there have always been players that have favored XL engines that will take them pretty much no matter what on their Highlanders, on their Cataphracts, etc. But uh, there was a movement a long time ago that I helped push towards Assault Max and Cataphracts taking standard engines for survivability over the little bit of speed and firepower that they gain. Uh, that's still mostly intact, but since we saw seen the fall of the Highlander in after the jump jet nerf and how slow it takes it to get into the air, uh, the Victor has risen up. The Victor, at the time when the Vic Highlander was really powerful, the Victor was just kind of like a 10-ton cheaper and not as good Highlander. Uh, it was pretty much viewed as that. It was not better than the Highlander because the Highlander was still far too mobile. But now the Victor, which is fully XL compatible, and I recommend everybody on anything but a brawling Victor takes an XL engine every time, every build. The Victor side torsos are small, its center torso is large, its arms are huge, excellent for shielding, perfect for shielding. So, uh, it's based on, yeah, it's based on the player really. Uh, I know that when I run up against people that run too many XLs, I end up just killing them in the XL. So, I wouldn't suggest putting it on every build, but some people can get away with it. It's mostly as long as you don't get shot back, you'll be fine. Alright, uh, I think there's only one question regarding maps. Marmon Rosar says, which are the best designed maps and which create the most fun and varied matches, competitive or otherwise, and to serve as a guideline for future maps, in your opinion? Uh, Caustic Valley, I would say, is by quite a bit the most balanced map. And Frozen City is also good. Caustic Valley, as you guys know, allows for really any type of 
combat style, any kind of deck to thrive. Brawl decks have plenty of uh, cover to move up. The Caldera is uh, great cover on your way through. You can jump right onto the other side of the Caldera onto an enemy team. LRM decks are great. There's plenty of lines for spotting. While the LRM stays safely behind cover, you can thrash people. There's very little cover for people to hide in against the LRMs. And sniping is also great. Just take up position on the edge of the Caldera. The movement is great. So Caustic Valley is super balanced. Uh, not so much on Assault Mode anymore after they added turrets, but otherwise it's a very balanced map uh, where any combat style can thrive. Frozen City also, uh, not as much as Caustic Valley. Uh, there's more cover against LRMs, but LRMs still can be very effective. Brawling is also very effective. There is lots of cover to move up and to engage your enemies. However, a sniping deck will still dominate on this map because there are still open sight lines, and if the snipers know where to position themselves to avoid the brawlers, they'll be able to put in a lot of damage before brawlers get in range. So Caustic Valley, I would say it's one of the it's the third map that was released and also the pinnacle of balance for this game so I'd like to see more maps with design in mind not not exactly identical to the Caustic Valley but making sure that all combat styles can fit in very well